Good morning. You all know that the people that give these little testimonials up here in church are trying to plant a seed. And you also know that a little thing like a seed can grow. So today I'd like to share with you how the little seed that God planted made me grow. You have to go back. It all started, I'm sure, when I was born. God planted a seed within me. And when I was a little girl and people asked me, Vicki, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would always answer, a teacher. I loved working with kids at Bible school, at Sunday school. I loved babysitting and tutoring. And eventually, I graduated from Bloomsburg with a teaching degree. Okay, now you have to fast forward 44 years later. I still love working with children who pay me back with little pleasures each day. So what I've done is I've taken my kids in my mommy and me class, and I want to show you what I mean. Meet the twins, Brody, who's standing, and Bryce. In October, they were both nonverbal, clinging to mommy for the entire hour of class. Today, they're talking and love to sing their favorite song, The Wheels on the Bus. Here's Connor. He is just now responding after starting class in October. And when we sing the opening song, How Are You?, he looks at me and goes, This is Jack. Now, Jack never does anything without his hat and his tongue. Since November, he's just started disengaging from his grandmother, who brings him to class. And he's playing with the other children within the class, and his grandmom is delighted. Meet Jackson. Although it's a mommy and me class, Jackson religiously, each day, backs his little body into me plops down on my lap and does the finger plays and songs with me while mommy sits by herself. This is Logan, my autistic little boy. You don't see his face because up until our last week of class before Christmas, he wouldn't even make eye contact with anybody. But that last day before our break, he looked me straight in the eye, put his hands up and gave me a high five. Now, this is PJ. She's not crying because she doesn't want to come to class. She's crying because she has to go home and class is over. She calls me Miss Mickey, and that she thinks that this is my house. So when she gets ready to come to class each day, she'll say, Mommy, we going to Miss Mickey's house? And this is Sophie. Now, Sophie still is nonverbal, but when she comes into the room and I'm sitting on the floor, she'll walk over to me, look me straight in the eye and go, that's her way of saying good morning. You see, I'm now planting seeds in the children that I work with, hoping to have the love of school grow within them. Each day I know that God had teaching in store for me when he planted that seed. After all, I've got the best job ever. So let me close with a prayer that says it all to teachers. Lord, enable me to teach with wisdom, for I help to shape the mind. Equip me to teach with truth, for I help to shape the conscience. Encourage me to teach with vision, for I help to shape the future. Empower me to teach with love, for I help to shape the world. I gave staff gifts out um, before the holiday. You had already, I think, bugged out after you gave me all the things that you had cooked and baked, and after Trent told me not to eat too much or I would have a tummy ache, her grandson. Um, but I wanted to make sure that you received your gift, and, and when I saw that you were doing this presentation, I wanted to gift it in front of the congregation for this reason. Yours is different than every other staff member's because your job is different than every other staff member's. Every other staff member I have, um, 
has a fairly defined, rigid role. Yours is not. Yours seems to be ever expanding. So here's your gift, and then I'll explain it once you open it. I didn't get her the weird pendant, just so you know. And your crosses are coming in. You have a cross that will match my pectoral cross. I didn't even know they made things like this. It took some time with the jeweler to explain it to me, and then I just got out of the way. It's an adjustable chain, because your job is to grow an organization, and you have done that. You have over 40 students more than uh, at least when I arrived at St. John's. So maybe Roger can stick that around your neck and okay. pull it the other way at times. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Well, next Sunday is next Sunday, but the following day is Monday, January 6th. And I am here to invite and welcome you to come to an epiphany service. Epiphany always falls on January 6th. Last year, we celebrated it on a Sunday, but it's not on Sunday this year. So I would like you to uh, come to an epiphany service, which is gonna start with a potluck dinner at 5.30. Bring your favorite item to share with others. Invite people who need a meal or just would like to learn about what Epiphany is about. We have been in the season of celebrating Christ's birth. Now we're going to finish out the Christmas season by celebrating what Epiphany is about and welcoming the wise men who are coming to see Jesus. So come out Monday, January 6th at 5.30. We'll eat first and then we'll have a little personal Epiphany service. I'm not sure about that yet. I think Brian Motes might be preaching. Ah, so the vice president of spiritual aims is going to be the preacher. Well, we'll see what he has to say. <laughs> Go. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, love from the beginning, word made flesh, breath of heaven. Let us confess our sinfulness before God and one another, trusting in God's endless mercy and love. Please kneel as you are able. Merciful God, we confess that we are not perfect. We have said and done things we regret. We have tried to earn your redeeming grace while denying it to others. We have resisted your call to be your voice in the world. Forgive us, loving God. Give us your righteousness, the strength to put aside our failures, and the courage to try again. Dear people of God, hear the good news. Christ the Savior is born. You are loved and forgiven in the name of Jesus who has come among us. You are freed from proving that you deserve to be loved because God's love is given to you as the most precious gift of all. Rejoice in this love and share it with the world. Amen. You may stand. The peace of the Lord be with you.
place our trust in our own powers. As you protected infant Jesus, so defend us and all the needy from harm and adversity. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading comes from Isaiah 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
Good morning. The second reading comes from Micah chapter 5. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth, then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his, his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. If the Assyrians come into our land and tread upon our soil, we will raise against them seven shepherds and eight installed as rulers. The word of the Lord. The third reading comes from Luke 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob, for, Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? 
The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord. Fourth reading is from Matthew, the first chapter. Now, the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relation with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The word of the Lord. gave the sign bow to babe on bended knee the savior of humanity unto us a child is born he shall reign forever
The fifth reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing good, you good news of great joy for all the people. To you, the, to you is born this day in the city of David, a Stavia, David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there, were, there was the angel of multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heavens. And on earth, peace among those who, he, whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they, went, so they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what, they had, what had been told to them about this child. And all who had heard it were amazed at what, they, at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it has been told to them. The word of the Lord. The sixth reading is from Matthew chapter 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been said, written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard, heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The word of the Lord.
Good morning. The seventh reading is from the book of Luke, chapter, verses 21 to 35. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord, Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. The word of the Lord. And final reading today comes from the first chapter of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. 
All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and yet the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord. Before we use the words of the Apostles' Creed to affirm our faith, I was just wondering how many of you noticed the traditional Lutheran person singing in a congregation? That would be me singing like this. And then the newer, more inspired Holy Spirit invert version, this. <laughs> Did you notice? Like I'm like this and she's doing this. So I started looking out into the congregation. I looked back at the choir, and there were a couple that were kind of moving around. And then out in the congregation, there were more doing that. It's kind of nice. I'm still going to stick to my way, but I invite you to participate in that new version. OK. Please join me in a proclamation of faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of your Amen. Please kneel for the prayer. Though we do not know all the details, we know Christ is always good and does everything to bring glory to God. Therefore, we praise him for what we will do in the lives of the following people. For Jackie, JC, Marion, Cecil, Carol, Janet, Terry, 
Ron, Erica, Barb, Noah, Dave, Robin, Amy, Bruce, Michael, Sharon, Nathaniel, Leonard, Sister Millicent, Scott, Jean, Becky, Shannon, and for all the unnamed people suffering with colds, coughs, the flu, and other illnesses. Lord Jesus, help the doctors and nurses to, di to diagnose what ails us and find a treatment that will restore us back to health. Give us rest so our bodies can heal. Give us peace to focus on what we need and restore us to good health. Holy Spirit, be in our senses to see the gifts we, we have and to be able to use them to serve others. May others see your reflection, Christ, and, and who we are. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise is on our lips and in our hearts, Holy One, for the gracious deeds and acts you have bestowed upon your church. Give to your whole church open hearts that we may work together to share your good news in Christ Jesus. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you, creator of all, for you have created a rich diversity of nature and creatures, sun, moon, stars, mountains, and all hills, oceans, and rivers. Sustain all that you made and keep us faithful in our care for creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We bless you, ruler of all, for the communities and nations of which we are a part, gather into your arms the many peoples of the world, and grant humility all leaders, so that we may find blessing and peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O Holy One, you overcame death and freed us from all fear. Give courage to all who are afraid, and comfort to all who suffer in any way. Give patience and compassion to those who provide care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Nurturing God, you care for your children in any danger. Grant courage to our congregation that we are present with children who need our love and protection, with parents who grieve the loss of children, and with those who seek safety from hurtful situations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Please add your personal prayer request at this time. Light of life, you claim us as your children forever. We praise you for those who have gone before us in the faith, serving as witnesses to your presence. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your gracious hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. For the anthem, I want to teach for a moment. This was the time that Shannon put in for me to say a few words, not so much a sermon, but an offering nevertheless. During the section of the service that's organized in the liturgy, it's okay, come on over. During the section of the liturgy that's organized and identified as offering, how many of you were taught that it's the time that the ushers come forward and they have plates and they collect the money. How many of you were taught that it's more than that? Have any of you ever participated or attended a congregation that the table is empty and that at that time the ushers bring the elements forward? They bring the communion bread or wafers, they bring the wine or the grape juice. Have any of you ever participated in a congregation of that way of doing? You have, yeah. Uh, that's another way to communicate. Every piece of the service is to communicate and to draw us toward what is central in worship. And of course, God is central. And at the same time, in our service, there are two places or stations, if you will, that are central. The font and the table. If we didn't have a table, you would focus on the altar. But this altar table and more appropriately, called a communion table, these are the two points where we are to focus our attention. Both are gathering places, 
Both are places that we invite others to participate with us. They are both community expressions. They are places where community is discerned, where community is developed and nurtured, where community goes beyond and it becomes the adjective, if you will. You know, we have a music, we have a worship and music program. Properly, it would be a, music, a worship and musical program. You want to use an adjective. You don't want to use a noun. In our congregation, we'll slowly try to introduce those pieces. So today, uh, Jim wanted me to announce as an offering, how many of you watch us on PC TV? How many of you know someone that watches us on PC TV? We can't find PC TV right now. They're not reachable. We don't know what's happening. We don't know. Do you know what's happening with PC TV? We're so glad to know that folks do appreciate it. And we have heard that message from folks, especially at Chestnut Knoll, Walnut Woods. Others have said that they look forward to Thursday night, kind of like they look forward to Jeopardy. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. But we don't know exactly what the status of PCTV is, only that we can't transmit there at this point. We don't know if they've shut down. We don't know if there's a licensing issue. We, we don't know. So maybe in that move, we just didn't get the email to tell us that they're taking a time out. Either way, spread the word so that folks know that we haven't abandoned our broadcast, that we're just waiting for word from PCTV. Um, in the confession today, it was really, a, it's a beautiful brief order for confession. We talk about our voices, and God calls our voice to be shared. We, we can use our Pennsylvania German background as an excuse to, well, we don't share our faith. Well, we do. All races, all nationalities, even Pennsylvania Germans are called by God. So you can avoid God through your heritage, or you can say that you are with your heritage to express your faith. So we're to use our voice, and we use it through mentoring and guiding behavior and shaping attitudes. And the attitude and behavioral patterns for 2020 are feed, pray, and love. So as we gather around this meal, do you know that this meal is about redemption? That we are to be redeemed? That we have been and I think the best of answers is when the salvationist or the Baptist approaches and says, are you saved? I was saved. I am being saved. And I will be saved is the answer I would encourage you to learn and to use. I believe it's the most theologically, biblically, and godly of answers. That this meal lifts you up and it carries you through all times of life. God doesn't promise that the darkness will not at times overwhelm. God promises only that in those overwhelming times to be present, God's light is present. As I wish the candles would be lighted right now and the sides and the trees, because it seems to me as though we should still be lit up. You can take that any way you wish. <laughs> so anyway, but you don't have to do it now because we're almost uh, at the conclusion. Do I hear click clicks? You have click clicks. Okay. You have plates. There's a message in this? There's a, oh, there's a lighting in this. Good. Thank you. Oh, so, you know, I, I finally got it. Is this the angel we have heard on high? Okay, let's proceed. That was pretty good.
have given us life, this community and these gifts of the earth that become the meal of your grace. Move in our hearts that we might use your gifts to bring hope and blessing wherever we go. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we begin the sacrament and the instructions and the consecration of the elements, I'd like you to consider if you haven't been in Wittenberg at St. Mary's Chapel, and if you haven't seen the four panels that would be at the Rerevas of the altar area, I want to tell you that one of those panels is a picture of Melanchthon preaching, the congregation gathered, and a suspended and elevated Jesus in the midst of the sanctuary, because the focus is to be all gather around the person and personality of Jesus Christ. If you can imagine here taking the cross from the wall and somehow suspending it right out here so that you don't observe what I'm doing and you can truly forget about me and just focus on the gift that Jesus gives you, the forgiveness of your sins. And in the forgiveness of your sins, the act is not completed. But forgive others as God forgave you is the text out of the third chapter of Colossians and the instructional point that the Apostle Paul is trying to make to the people at Colossae. He is trying to say, because you have been forgiven, now forgive others. The same grace and mercy you desire so much from God and from others, give it to others. In other words, behave in a way that you're kind and generous and gracious with your words. Don't be stingy. Don't withhold. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into the time, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Emmanuel, God with us, you grace us with life and breath and give us bread for the journey. Send us out in service to this world that you love, telling the amazing news of your coming to be Savior and Lord of all. God's own heart, peace from the child in the manger, and the strength from the spirit of life be blessings for you today and forever.
Christ is born, go tell it on the mountain and everywhere. Heritage.